Let's work with you here. Ooh, I like it muy macho. You know, after all this time, I think I finally figured out what A24 actually stands for. A 24 year long wait before we finally see the second episode of House of the Okay, I know it's not fair to expect this series to be out in a super speedy fashion. There's a lot of work involved in the creation of animation, tons of unexpected setbacks that can delay or completely halt progress, and of course a lot of changes that need to be made between pitch and final product. And personally, I think we should consider ourselves lucky as diehard fans, since Vivzi is no stranger to sharing production details with us once her A204 lords give her the green light. And while no solid release date has been revealed as of yet, which has left the fanbase starving for more Double H content, Viv still managed to provide us with some spicy, chewy eye candy that's sure to hold us off before the main course arrives. I'm talking, of course, about the character redesigns. Every single time one of these drops, Twitter loses its freaking mind, leading to a temporary trend on the platform full of fresh-made fan art and gushing praise from every angle. It really does show how huge this fanbase is when just a single still image can invoke this much positive reception. And being a very vocal Vivzi supporter in the past, some people have been wondering if I think these new demons look devilishly dapper as well. So how's about we pull up the designs of the OG has been cast and see how they measure up to their brand new versions. Keep in mind that only four characters have been redesigned up to this point, and if anyone else gets changed as well, like Nifty, Husk, Serpentis, or Cherry Bomb, I'll definitely do a part two as well, so subscribe if you want to see that. But for now, let's critique the reinterpretations of these underworld sensations. Off we go! Let's start off with our head hotel honcho herself, Charlie Magne! Magna... Mag... 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 Nay... Magni... Mag... Manga... Her. And I'm just gonna straight up say it, change that 7 to an 8, cause Charlie is so gorgeous it should be a freaking sin. I'm serious, I love everything about this original design. The whole button-up shirt, jacket, pants, and bow tie give off the vibe of both a snazzy showgirl and a professional hotel worker. It tells me that she's both a musical fanatic that could burst into song at any point, heck, her black and white boots make it look like she's always got dancing shoes on just in case, but it's clear that she's also trying to be taken seriously since she really wants this hotel dream to get off the ground. And the fact that each article has its own color of black, white, or red makes each individual piece stick out more, with little accents like the black on the trim of her coat and the red cuffs on her pants to really bring it all together. The bleach blonde hair, rosy cheeks, puppy dog nose, and massive smile tell you all you need to know about her bubbly, optimistic outlook on life, while her subtle but still visible fangs show that there is a demon deep down inside that could pop up at any moment, so be careful. Also, the way her black lipstick and nail polish contrast against her pale white skin, mwah, beautiful. Charlie will always be one of my favorite Vivzi designs, on top of being one of my favorite Vivzi characters. And while she is native to hell, I imagine that any interaction with her would probably feel like heaven. So, how does that redesign hold up? Hmm... Well, some things are still the same. She's still got the same hotel slash dancer attire, same boots, same nails, same cheeks and blonde hair, same basic aesthetic it seems. But there are a few small details you'll notice if you look closely. Like her hair is a little bit different with this more pronounced lick up here, a sort of pink interior in this part for some reason, and it's in more of a ponytail fashion instead of just being tied up on the bottom like it was before. There are more noticeable shoulder pads on her jacket, her bow tie's a lot smaller, her fangs are more pronounced, her pupils are red, the neck on her shirt is a lot higher, her chin has a little more shape to it, and her pants have gone from black to maroon, I guess. I honestly don't know how to feel about this one. I mean, she looks great, don't get me wrong, but I feel like some of the details kind of take away from her original charm a bit. Like her more pronounced fangs definitely make her look more demon-esque, but I like the idea of the fangs kind of being tucked away, where you know they exist, but they don't make themselves known all the time. Kind of similar to her demon form that pops out every once in a while. I also really liked her more rounded face in the OG design. It gave off the impression of childlike innocence, you know, like a plump baby's face. I think it fit her personality a little more. She honestly looks more like Charlie's older sister than Charlie herself. The pants being red kind of takes away from that cool contrast I mentioned before, and the ponytail does look nice, but I honestly prefer it when her hair is more free-flowing since it ties in with that happy, free-spirited vibe she gives off. You know, like a Rapunzel, wind in my hair kind of deal. Heck, I could totally see her singing that song. probably gonna get crucified for not praising every aspect of this new look, but hey, for what it's worth, I still think she looks nice. And if this is gonna be the norm for the new series, then I am totally on board with it. 
If you want my thoughts in terms of numbers, I'd give Charlie's original design a freaking 10, and the new one, an 8.5. She still looks great, I just enjoy the original a bit more. Also, I absolutely adore her new last name of Morningstar, with it being both a great reference to her heritage as Lucifer's daughter, and also just sounding so pretty in and of itself. It's the perfect combination of heavenly and hellish, just like the girl herself. Alrighty, next up it's the host with the most who tends to boast when he turns creepers into toast. It's Alistair! I'll be honest, it took me a little while to come around on Alistair's look. I always thought that there was just too much stuff going on at once. It's like the design equivalent of a Micro Machines commercial. Like, hey, look what we got over here and over there and over there. Oh, there's more stuff down here. There's more stuff up here. Oh, I haven't mentioned this stuff and this stuff and this and that and that and this and this. Stop! Enough! It's too much, all right? But the more I thought about it, the more I looked at it, the more I started to like it. His whole 1920s radio host look with the formal suit, bow tie, monocle, and long trailing jacket gives him a professional air, while those dark red eyes and sharp teeth that are constantly in your face since he's always smiling give him a really menacing vibe as well. Not to mention a few details like the fact that he wears gloves and the fact that he has deer antlers and ears on his head kind of point to a certain dark past for his character. A past where he might have needed to keep his hands clean? A past where an accident occurred that cost him dearly? But hey, I won't spoil his origins for you, you can go look him up yourself. So yeah, wasn't huge on Big Al's design at first, but he eventually grew on me the more I stopped to think about it. So, how's the new version look? Huh. You know what? I can actually dig this. Just like Charlie, there isn't a ton that's different, he's still got the same overall look like he did before, same suit, same bow tie, microphone, ears, and hair, but I'm really digging the small changes in this case. His overall colors are a little bit brighter, which really make him stand out like the spotlight-stealing personality he is. There's this nice-looking white trim on his coat, which I think looks way better than the pure black color it had before. His hair looks a little bit straighter and more trimmed, which fits with his well-groomed appearance, and even his microphone looks a little bit different. It's kind of sharp on the end, like he's carrying around a microphone spear or something. He may look like a smiley, welcoming radio host on the surface, but if you get on his nerves, he can stab you in the back just as easily either with media attention or just literally. <laughs> this is a redesign that I just think is a straight improvement over the original. Nothing else to be said. If I thought the original design was like an 8, I'm going to give this one a 9. A radio demon has never looked snazzier. Alrighty, Angel Dust is next. And it's fitting that this guy's named after a drug, because man, is his design a freaking trip. I never really understood exactly what Angel's supposed to be. He's like a fuzzy, spider-armed, big-haired, stripper, creature, guy, thing. He's got this outrageous do, this very pronounced chest, the sleek, almost skin-tight outfit that doesn't leave much to the imagination, thigh-high boots and gloves on each hand. Everything pretty much gives off the vibe of a dude who's always advertising his product, if you know what I mean. And little details like having one black and one white eye kind of hint at how he's towing the line between rebellious and reformed as hinted at in the pilot and the Attic music video. Don't get me wrong, he looks really cool. He's probably the most iconic design in the series. But if you asked me to put his look into exact words, like what creature does he look like to you, it would honestly be harder than trying to finish this sentence without getting demonetized. So I'm just going to stop right there. Anyway, Angel spent enough time in the dressing room, so let's see what he's got for us. Oh, along came a spider who sat down beside her. <laughs> yeah, I think it's safe to say that we've got another direct upgrade in my opinion. His new design definitely feels a lot less spindly and spider-like compared to his old look. He's got much less skinny limbs and a shorter neck, a bit of a thicker body and less ample bosom. His jacket and bow tie are slightly different, and his boots look like they have more of a leather sheen to them, which I appreciate. My favorite part is his new gloves. They look less like thick gardening gloves and more like delicate silk gloves like royalty would wear, which I think is more fitting with what look he's going for. Plus having two different colors as opposed to just red is definitely a neat choice as well. Yeah, not much to say. I just think this package looks a lot better than the old one. It's similar to Alistair where the changes aren't super in your face noticeable, but what they did change, I like. So I'm gonna give Angel Dust's original design an 8.5 and the new Angel a 9.5. Get out there and strut your stuff, my guy, because you've earned it. And finally, let's have a chat about old Fifty Shades of Grey herself, Vaggy. This was a design that I was honestly very mixed on. 
Aesthetically speaking, I didn't find it super appealing with all that gray and white and just general boring color palette, and aside from that holy cow hair, nothing about her really stuck out in my mind compared to her fellow hotel mates. But credit where it's due, her design kind of hints at an interesting story. With her long gloves, promiscuous dress, frilly mismatched stockings, and giant X over her eye, I'm sensing a very, very tragic past here, especially when you consider her Salvadorian origins. So yeah, from a visual level, I wasn't really digging it at first, but I thought about how each detail might tie into her backstory, and I came to respect it a lot more. But hey, no need to dwell on the past, because we've got a face full of Vaggie's future right here. Hmm, it's taking every fiber of my being not to make the obvious joke. Nope, can't do it. Play the clip. Your har fiddle dee dee Being a pirate's the life for Baggy. She'll take your loot and make out with Charlie. Baggy is a pirate. <laughs> Okay, in all seriousness though, this is hands down the best redesign of the bunch. Faggy looks freaking amazing in this outfit. Her bow and hair have much sharper edges now which feel really fitting given that she's a no-nonsense kind of girl that's proficient with bladed weaponry. The highlights on her hair are gray now instead of pink, which I just think looks a lot better color-wise. It's possible that she's wearing an eye patch under her hair, which gives her a much more intimidating vibe without covering the iconic X over her eye, and that red blouse, black mini skirt, and matching gloves and stockings are not only cute as anything and contrast a lot nicer against her bright white hair, but I really like the implied messaging going on here. Obviously, it makes more sense for Vaggy to be in uniform since she's technically the manager of the hotel, so she should look like it, but when I look at these designs side by side, it makes me think that even though Vaggy's life was horrifying and tragic when she was still a human, when she eventually met Charlie, she found a new purpose, a new partner, and a brighter outlook on life. And instead of just keeping on the clothes that she likely died in, she tosses away her past and begins to look forward towards the bright horizon of a new tomorrow. I don't know, maybe that seems kind of pushy, but these two designs really do look like a before and after picture in more ways than one, while also being freaking adorable on their own. And don't say you're not cute, Baggy, because you know you are. I'm cute. Look at this bowl. So yeah, original design gets like a 7, but the new design gets a freaking 10. Full steam ahead for Baggy's new look. And that's about it. I'm honestly pretty positive about these new designs, and they're a nice taste of this franchise's eventual future. But overall, what do you guys think? Which original design was your favorite? And do you think these remakes are an improvement or a downgrade? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in, everybody, and I hope to see you all real soon.